Hi, it's Frank from Man Lake, and I'm here with Amy Vu from the University of Florida Bee Lab. Uh, we're going to talk today about beekeeping in Florida, what Amy's job is. She's got her master's in agriculture education. Agriculture education, so, and she works with bees exclusively, so she's going to give us a lot of information about beekeeping in Florida and how it affects everything else. So, first of all, Amy, Tell me a little bit about what you do in your job. Yeah, so my title is a state specialized extension agent and my job is to communicate science um, with researchers and beekeepers um, specifically. So I work with the apiculture industry, I work with beekeepers from hobbyist beekeepers to commercial beekeepers, and I essentially am the science communicator between the education system and, and beekeepers. I'm sure your biggest struggle is with the hobby beekeepers. They're the ones that need the most help, I take it. Um, there, there are actually different challenges, whether you're a hobbyist beekeeper or a commercial beekeeper. Usually the hobbyist beekeepers tend to want information more on basic management, how to get started in beekeeping, and basic nutrition. And then, of course, the commercial beekeepers have a completely different need, and so their challenges relate more to their business operations. As I say, a hobby beekeeper in Florida, what are their biggest challenges? What are the commercialized biggest challenges here in Florida? Yeah, so the biggest challenge that I would say across the board, um, the, there's an organization called the Bee Informed Partnership, right. and they focus on three very hot topics as far as what challenges are for beekeepers. So whether you're a backyard beekeeper or commercial beekeeper, you're always going to be worrying about Varroa, nutritional situations and issues, and also queen-related issues. So whether or not your queen is performing well, um, whether she is mated well, um, which is both related to one another. Yeah. In Florida, which is kind of unique to most of the other states, you've got a lot of commercial beekeepers and a lot of hobby beekeepers. Do they get along? Do they clash? Do they help each other? Or I should say, do the commercial guys help the hobbyists? Yeah, we, we actually, we have a lot of beekeepers in Florida. We have a lot of honeybee colonies in Florida. We're actually the top five um, honeybee colony producing states here in the state. We've got about 5,000 beekeepers. Uh, that's between both hobbyists and commercial beekeepers. And they run about 750,000 colonies. 750,000 in Florida. 750,000 in Florida, and that does not include our migratory beekeepers. Wow. The beekeepers that come from outside the state that overwinter in Florida, it's, a, it's probably closer to 850,000 colonies that we have um, just throughout the year. Wow. And you brought up a good point. Uh, the migratory guys that bring them into Florida, because Florida is a big building state, getting your bees ready to go to almonds. So guys who may be in Michigan bring their bees south, build them, to get them on almonds. Absolutely. Right? I heard that about one third, almost one third of the bees that get put out in almonds came out of Florida. Yeah, so, um, you know, people love to visit Florida. They like to live here in Florida, and that's because our weather is just perfect year round. Yeah. We don't have a true winter, so Florida is a great place for beekeepers to overwinter. And not only are they coming down here, but they're bringing their bees down here as well. And so we have beekeepers from New York, from the Dakotas, from Michigan, and just throughout the nation who will just stop by here in the fall just to prep their bees to go out to California for almond pollination in January, February. Get them up to that strength they need to be to get a good grade on those bees. That's right, exactly. Yeah, I know we all have the same challenges around the country of keeping bees alive. It might be slightly different from the north to the south, but you guys have or had something very unique to this area. Hurricane Ian. That's right. Um, How did that affect the bees in Florida that year? Absolutely. So Hurricane Ian came and hit in probably October, which is usually a time for commercial beekeepers to overwinter in Florida. Not only is it the time that all the other states start to get snow and colder weather, but we have a very special crop here in Florida, and that's the Brazilian pepper tree. And so beekeepers will bring their bees down here to overwinter because that's usually the time of year that Brazilian pepper tree produces nectar for those bees. And so when the hurricane came through, what it essentially did was it, the beekeepers brought their bees down here, Hurricane Ian hit, we had inches and inches and inches and feet of rain. Um, the wind was insane. The wind blew all of these bee lids, you know, all the hives apart, tore them apart. And not only that, but it blew all the forage off of that Brazilian pepper tree, which was a huge problem because the beekeepers brought their bees down to Florida for that Brazilian pepper tree nectar. Um, so it became a big issue as far as having enough feed and just having the bees 
for those beekeepers to have healthy colonies to be able to go out for pollination. So that had to be a big struggle for the beekeepers to begin with. Right. And I take it that had a nationwide effect since they start here. Do you know how, what effect that was on the rest of the country when, you know, pollination started in mm -hmm. the spring? Was there a shortage of bees? Was there, do you know? Yes, yeah, so not, there was definitely a shortage of bees. Um, the other issue is that we have a lot of queen breeders in our state. Um, so they distribute their queens to lots of other beekeepers across the country. Um, and so definitely the queen breeding aspect of it, not having the queens available, but also just not having the bees that are typically used and getting ready to go out to pollination. And so um, the effects are essentially just having less bees to take out to California for those pollination services. So it almost had a domino effect, less bees, less pollination, less money back to the beekeeper, tougher to keep their business. Right, absolutely. And not just almonds, um, but here in Florida, we do a lot of crop pollination with blueberries, with melons and with squash. And so, you know, not only was the California almond industry affected, but also all those other pollination and specialty crops that we have, like the watermelons and right. blueberries. And going all the way up to Pennsylvania, New York, and Maine, blueberries, apples, Apples, cranberries, cranberries yes, yep. absolutely. So I get asked all the time, and I'm sure you do, how do I save the bees? Yeah, that's a question that I receive all the time. Um, you know, there are lots of ways that you can save the bees. Sometimes we tell people you don't even actually have to be a beekeeper to save the bees. A lot of times you can do other things like diversify the different plants that you're putting out. So providing bees with different pollinator plants, different nectar resources. Um, you can also put out water for the bees. Um, that, those are huge things that you can do and just let your lawn grow, let those flowers grow and uh, those are ways that you can support the bees without actually becoming a beekeeper. We're, we're lucky to have people like you in this industry to, to help the beekeepers out. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing regarding beekeeping itself, what you do, what services you provide, anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a website, it's ushoneybee.com. Um, I like to tell people that if they have any honeybee related questions, they should be able to go there and find all the information that they need. Um, but any hot topics related to beekeeping, um, hopefully the University of Florida is at the forefront of that and we're, we're here to help and to provide that service. That'd be perfect. You don't want to give your personal number, do you? Ah, uh, no, I'm okay. I'll give you, you can Google me and you can find my email address there. Though. Thank you very much, Amy. It was great to meet you and talk to you today. Thank you Thank so you. much.